Welcome to Baylorick TV and this edition of Inside Story. We ask the questions you want the answers to. And now our host, Ingram Jones. Good evening and welcome to Baylorick TV. I'm your host, Ingram Jones. And in tonight's show, we've got Ava Knight, the three-time world boxing champion. Um... Before I begin or we go into this interview, I'd like to thank everyone who's been so supportive to Bayloric TV. Um, like I like I say, we try to ask the questions that you want the answers to. So I do try where I can to get those questions in. It's not always possible, but you do try. Um, but I'd like to give you like a bit of information coming into this particular interview. Ava Knight has been somebody I've admired for a while as a boxing fan of, because uh, I am a fan of female boxing, um, and uh, yeah, I really want to get an interview overnight. But I learned a very important lesson from the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Uh, for those of you who follow me on Twitter, you will have noticed one um, evening uh, Lennox popped on my Twitter page and um, basically. Yeah, gave me a lesson in being patient. I'm a very, uh, what's the word? I'm a go-getter. And you know, sometimes in life you try and push to get things. You want, I want to get things done now, 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 now. Um, and uh, if I don't get it now, then it's not going to happen. So in this situation, Lennox, you know, spoke to me. Uh, very. Um, Firm, but fair manner, fair, fair play to Lennox. And uh, yeah, I, I heeded his words of, of uh, wisdom. And also from Bryant Jennings, who I uh, hope to in interview soon. And the lesson is about patience. And uh, I guess it was patience that got me the interview with uh, Ava Knight. Um, I had emailed Ava a few times uh, through Facebook and through Twitter. And um, as you'll discover in this interview, she runs her Facebook and her Twitter accounts by herself. So I finally got the interview of Ava Knight. It was an interview that I um, really did want. Um, as a fan of female boxing, it was a, a shame. I wanted to know why boxing was, well, in terms of women's boxing, it wasn't on, like, big fights you know you see the big fights and they'd be on on the cards it wasn't happening more I remember the days of uh, Lucia Riker and uh, me St. John Layla Ali uh, to name but a few um, but um, now it's you know as I said in the interview I don't want to spoil it for you but um, yeah it's interesting and uh, this interview I have to say that I was um, genuinely um, shell shot. Um, I'm not usually one that's short of a word, but in this interview, I have to say I was gobsmacked. But again, thank you to Byron Jennings, thank you to Lennox Lewis. Um, I will try to be more patient in my approach. And who knows, one day I'll be interviewing both of you. But as for now, on with the show, I'm with three time world champion and current world champion, the number one, Ava Knight, the first lady of boxing. I may just add, Ava Knight is also the first lady of boxing on Bayloric TV, the first female boxer. We've had so far Emily Pandalakis, we've had Misha Rosado, 
And now we have our first female boxer in Ava Knight. Let's hear what Ava's got to say. Hello? Good afternoon, Miss Knight. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Ingram Johnson, Baylorick TV. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you, Ava? Good. Great. Um, reason I wanted to re talk to you was because um, I've seen a few of your fights and I've always been a fan of female boxing or women's boxing, but I've noticed that there's been a almost a, a disappearance of female boxing on, on coverage on television, especially in the UK. Um, so I wanted to know more about the first lady of boxing. I wanted to know about your boxing background and anything you care to share with Bayloric TV. So again, thank you for the interview. And uh, first I've got to ask is um, what made you get into boxing? Uh, I started boxing uh, at 13 years old. Uh, it was sort of an accident. I never watched it before, been interested in it, but it was just something to do at the time. So uh, I went to the gym with my friend, and after uh, about six months of just exercising, I got into the ring, and she was the first one to knock me down. And after that, I just fell in love with the sport. I kept I kept at it and just wanted to see where I could go with it. Wow, wow. Um, so uh, in terms of amateur fights, what happened there? Uh, I had about 34 amateur fights. Um, I was 28 and 4, but, you know, just being a small girl in Northern California, there wasn't a lot of people to fight, so I was fighting the same girl three, four times and really not going anywhere. And at the time, there were no Olympics. Um, the nationals weren't paid for by the organizations in the United States, so it was just really hard for me. Okay, okay, okay. So in, so from being an amateur, um, who was your trainer at the time as an amateur? Uh, uh, as as an amateur, my trainer was Joe Rodriguez out of uh, Chico, Chico Boxing. He started me out along with my dad and his son. And, uh, you know, they were great trainers. They they got me so far and they, they taught me the fundamentals. Okay, so growing up, um, who were your boxing the people that you looked up to in boxing? Uh, you know, like I said, I never knew what boxing was when I got into it. Mm. So I never really watched boxing when I wow. started. I, I, It was just something that was natural to me because, you know, my father had done it as a kid, but I never really was into boxing. I never really watched it, and so I didn't look up to anybody. I just was in the ring doing what people taught me. Wow. So now, okay, you turn pro, and uh, if you could, you let the the, the fans know um, your record as a pro. Yeah, right now it's eleven wins, one loss, and three draws. Okay, and the belts that you hold, which is so important. Uh, I just got stripped of my IBF title, so right now I hold the WBC Silver World Title and the WBC Diamond Belt. Okay, wow, wow. So why did you get stripped of the title? Um, I guess this last fight, you know, on Saturday I had a rematch with, with one of the girls from Mexico, and I didn't know what was going on. I just came to fight, and apparently uh, since we didn't defend the IBS belt, uh, it, it was immediately vacated. Pretty harsh. <laughs> is there any, any reason why that is? I mean... I think it was just because of their rules. Um, every time that you fight for a title fight, you must defend their belt. So there's no getting around. I couldn't fight for this other belt and not fight for for the IBF, and it just ended up that they vacated it. So I couldn't because could, of that. So couldn't you've just defended both belt, defended a belt, defended your IBF, and still gone for a title like a unification belt? Uh, yeah, I could have, but I guess you know. But the promoter didn't have the money for the sanctioning fees, and it just ended up, you know, I don't, I don't really know most of what happened, but uh, I just know that it, they couldn't they couldn't pay for it, and wow. it just, I had to fight for the WBC, and I ended up losing it, which is sad because I, I you know, I, I held that belt very proudly, and it, it, it sucks that I'm losing it. Wow, wow, wow. So, so what weight are you fighting at, at the moment, Ava? I'm fighting at flyweight. Okay. 
when I did my uh, little bit of research about you, I noticed you took a fight at bantamweight as well. Yeah, you know, when I first started, there I couldn't find fights, and, and the only fights I could get were, were at bantamweight. And I really don't, I'm really not that big of a girl. Uh, I walk around at bantamweight, so, you know, for me to fight the girls that are weighing 10 pounds heavier and coming down to weight is... is it's really hard. It's hard to fight those bigger girls. So Challenge. that's what was perfect for me. So tell me, why, I mean, today, what's, what's happened with female boxing or women's boxing? Because I remember the time where I would watch a big fight and you'd see Mia St. John or you'd see uh, uh, Layla Ali or Riker. These, the, these girls would be on, you know, on undercards or sometimes top in the bill. What's happening? Why is that not the case anymore? You know, I, I don't know exactly why I've been trying to do my research, and the biggest thing I can find is, is that HBO and Showtime are the biggest names on TV with boxing right now. And, and their excuse for, for not putting women on is, is because there are no big names and there's no talent, you know. And they and they think that Layla Ali and Mia St. John were the best of the best. But if you look at the girls right now, they would destroy those those women, you know, Mia St. John made a comeback. And, uh, yes, I and, believe she's... And she, yeah, and she's, she's, she's been beat, you know, I, I, she beat Christy Martin, but they're both old, you know, I know, I'm, I don't mean it in a disrespectful way, but it's just, it's, anybody now has surpassed the talent of the fighters from before, and Showtime and HBO don't want to give us a chance to, to showcase that. She's going to be fighting Cecilia Breakers. I believe. Yeah, it, yeah, I, I I saw that, you know. Um, I thought Bre- Breakus should be fighting Holly Holm, but I guess they couldn't come to an agreement. Mm. And, uh, you know, her fighting Mia St. John. I mean, it's good for her record. You know, Mia St. John is a big name, but I don't think it's going to be as, as good as a fight. Wow. I mean, you're the first lady of boxing, and you hold quite a few titles, and you've been very successful in doing so. Um, so why do you think that you're not getting the, the breaks or, or, or the coverage? I know you mentioned HBO and Showtime in terms of yourself. I mean, for example, I've seen a few of your, a lot of your fights have to be in Mexico. Why is that if you're you're based in America, in, 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 in California, is it? Yeah. So yeah, why... I'm not in California. Mexico just, you know, they really value the female fighters, and they put them right. on a pedestal just like the men. And... and well, every time I go to Mexico, I get treated like a fighter. And every time I'm in the United States, I'm like a second-class citizen when it comes to the boxing world. Wow. And, it, and it's it's really unfair. Uh, it's, that's why I've been going back to Mexico. And, and even though every time I go, you know, they, they always root for the Mexicans, you know, just because that's their people, that's their country. Naturally. But they always give me the respect. And and I love that. And, you know, I, they even gave me the name. I'm the destroyer of Mexicans because I go down there and beat the Mexican <laughs> women. But, but they still respect me and they still, you know, show me a lot of love. What about in Europe? What about you traveling to Europe and boxing in Europe and to, to, to raise your profile even more so? You know, I've never I've never had a chance to get to Europe. I know there's quite a few girls in my weight class, but I don't, I've never gotten a call from a promoter to come down to Europe, and, you know, I would love to do it. I think we got one call once, but, you know, uh, I think the pay just wasn't enough, and it's not like we women get paid a lot. Mm. But, you know, I, I didn't ex- I didn't expect an offer of, of less than what I'm, half of less is what I'm getting right now. Could it be because you're too good that they don't want you to come over to Europe and destroy some of the European fighters as well, Ava? It could be true, you know. Um, it's I'm a big risk for a lot of people. When I even when I first started, they they thought they were going to use me as a stepping stool, and that's why I stepped up in in classes really fast because you know the fighters just thought they were going to step up. And but I was always I'm always a risk, and and I think a lot of fighters don't want to take that. So, so, so talk to me about, about this thing about being used as a stepping stone. I'm really interested. I'm intrigued about that because. It's the story of a champion. It's not so much people see the champion, you know, they've got the belt around their waist and they see them with all the glory. But it's that 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 those incidents in the back, you know, behind the scenes, they're being treated, you know, less than kindly, and 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 the struggles. Those are the 
conversations and the real talk that I'm really interested in because there are a lot of uh, people that listen to the Bayloric, um show and they love the idea of people speaking openly and frankly about, you know, the the the, the difficult business that boxing is. So for mm-hmm. you, why 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 do you feel that you're getting, if not shortchanged, then being treated the way you've been treated? Well, you know, I think it's it's more than me. It's it's all women um, that have gone through it in my era. Uh, you know, we, we women we don't get to be prospects. You know, we don't get the chance to to build up and and get that technique down before we get to step up. And that's what happened to me. Um, you know, my fourth fight, I fought Elena Reed, and Elena Reed fought a lot of good fighters in Europe. And at the time I fought her, it was you know my fourth fight, and it was her twenty. 26 fight or something like that. Wow. And it it was just a huge step up, you know, for me being a a, a young fighter fighting a, a ex world champion. And a lot of women have to do that just because if we don't, then we don't fight. And and it's in the background, you know, it's hard for me to watch these men on TV. You know, I'm watching HBO and Showtime and watching these awful fights with these so-called prospects fighting ducks, you know, getting, putting in people in there that they found off the street so they can knock out. And, it, and it's horrible cause, because we women don't get that. We don't even get to be on TV, let alone get thrown fights like that. And if we do, you know, it's for $100, $200. Wow. We deserve better. We deserve a lot better. Wow. That is, that's, well, well, what about forming some sort of a union? I mean, clearly the likes of Layla Ali and, and Neil St. John and, Riker and Christy Martin, if they could all come together and bring the new generation in and do some sort of boxing women's union to sort of really step up the ante, ante about, you know, getting yourself back on television. I mean, that would that surely has got to have some weight. Yeah, but, yeah, that would be huge. You know, the biggest name in boxing, in women's boxing, is Layla Ali. And I've had quite a bit of issues with her because of the things that she said in the past about women boxing and and from what I've come to from all of it is that she doesn't support professional women's boxing and that and that hurts us when you have someone so big and with a name so known come out and say that she doesn't she doesn't support us and and that's exactly what we need the rest of us women need her we need her to come out and say how come there's no women on showtime she was on HBO. She was on television, you know. Mia St. John was on television. Christy Martin, they were all on television. But once they all retired, it's like they just threw us in the trash can and let us just defend ourselves. And, and you know, she, we need them, but they're, they're really not doing anything. It's absolutely shocking because, you know, that's somebody, Layla Ali, that I knew that was, you know, she was one of the, the women, the, 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 the woman to watch when you're watching boxing. You know, and, mm-hmm. and for her, to, and, and for her to say that, and she was on many fights, and you know, Layla Ali, I know, was a was a real crowd puller, and uh, for her to say that, I'm, 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 I'm speechless. I'm, st- I'm stunned. When did you hear? Yeah, this? I, I, I felt the same way. You know, I found an article right before the Olympics came out, mm-hmm. and she, you know, she's a big supporter of amateur boxing, which mm-hmm. is great. You know, that's that's where we all start out. But she clearly stated that she she did not support professional women's boxing, and she didn't she would never advise any woman to turn pro, and and that was sort of a slap slap in the face to us. And when I brought that out, and I and I even made comments about it, and on you know their little Facebook, she she responded and she said, well, what am I supposed to do? And you know for her to ask a question like that, you know she has all this pool on television. She knows everybody. One word is all she has to do. All she has to go up to one person and, and say, Hey, how come you're not you know, how come you're not putting women on T V? You know, that's all we need. We don't need her to give us money. We don't need her to do anything. All we need is for her to just put put it out there. Have you ever thought of maybe trying to get on T V via another avenue, maybe not in America but maybe in Europe and get a European deal? Maybe I don't know, even come to England and ask one of the English promoters to, to, to get you on television. I mean, that would be oh, you know. I mean, uh I mean Cecilia Breakers has got some sort of T V coverage in Europe. Have, is there any mm-hmm. way you could get some sort of co promotion that you could 
you know, be on a bill under someone like that? Or I, I don't know, because you are a star in your own right. So really sharing the bill with someone like Cecilia Breakers would be, I don't know, it'd be counterproductive, but I, I don't know, just some, some other way, because it can't stay the way that it is. It, it, mm-hmm. it, it's a real shame. I mean, like you're right, you mentioned something, I want to go back to something you said earlier on about fighters that, um, a male fighter or male boxers that are um, fighting ducks. There's a lot of it. A lot of uh, managers and promoters is all all about protecting an unbeaten record. Once you're beaten, suddenly it's it's the end of your career. But yet, yeah, you know. But you look at the greats going down back in, in history: Ali, Fraser, Foreman, Tyson. Uh, you know, Sugar Ray Robertson, Sugar Ray Leonard. You go for them all. They've all suffered losses. Some of them have been knocked out, and they've come back on, and you know, and still come back on one titles. Yet yeah. today, it just seems to be about manoeuvring people with big records and people who sell out state. It's, it seems to be more about who can sell out a stadium rather than who, rather than somebody's record. But these guys, it seems these promoters are into just building records. And as one person said to me recently, if you want, if you want to make records or build records then be a DJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you know that that that's true. Um I I was talking to one of my, my friends who wants to box and I said it's it's not even about your boxing right now, you know. The first thing you have to do is, is bring a crowd, bring the money in. And then the second thing you have to do is keep the zero, keep the wins coming. And after that it's pretty much, you know, it's it's just about the money. It's not about the fighter, like you said Fighters back in the day have losses, mm. you know, and, and I felt that even with me coming up and I had that one loss in these draws, I thought, oh, well, I'm never going to get it. You know, I'm never going to fight now. My record is ruined. And even me just thinking like that is, is a bad thing about boxing, you know. It's not about who can put on a great show. Every time I fight, you know, I get great reviews and great shows and everybody's mm-hmm. like, wow. You know, no matter how how I do, whether it's a draw or a win or a loss, you know, it's people love it, and and the, the promoters here in the U.S. aren't doing it. You know, um, I have been on TV in Mexico for the last four or five fights, and mm. they love me. You know, they I get all kinds of fan fan mail from other countries, except for here. You know, even in the um, in Europe, you know, my mother's from Poland, and I'm starting to get a fan base from Poland now that, that they know that, you know, that's my heritage and it's great to get that support. And even out there, people are reaching out, but no, you know, the U S is just hard to reach into. You know, Ava, if you, I think one of the things is as well, doing more, doing more interviews as you've done with Bayloric TV, to be able to do more interviews to even, it might be a pain for you because I know you're probably a very busy woman as it is, but doing more interviews, making your profile even more so known. I mean, now that I, I will pump, this video all that I can to all the promoters that I know in, in the UK as well and, and, and talk to them and see what they can say about things. But it, it's it's hurtful to hear this stuff. It really is. I'm 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 stunned. I'm I'm really I'm shocked. I'm really lost for words because I didn't mm-hmm. think it was, I didn't think it was that I didn't think it was that bad. You know, but okay, coming back to your own career, um you were unbeaten up to the point you fought a lady called Ava Maria, am I right? I Anna Maria. Yeah. Anna Maria, yes, Anna Maria. And I saw that fight, and my gosh, that was a that was a real toe to toe battle. Mhm. Yeah, it was it it was a big learning experience for me. Um, uh, I actually went into the fight hurt. You know, I don't use it as an excuse because she did beat me, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, she looked good doing it. But mm-hmm. you know that there were parts in the fight that I thought, you know, I. I could have hung if I wasn't hurt, you know, and I still want my rematch. And, you know, she just had a baby, and I'm hoping that we can get that rematch. Mm. That was, she was, uh, she was really, she was throwing punches all over the place. She was, uh, yeah. she, she, she just kept coming and coming and coming. Like one of those yeah, she's, she's a tough fighter. Yeah. She, she'll just run right into you and throw punches. And that's what I like about her. She's got a lot of heart. And she's a really nice person. I've You know, I've talked to her after and I fought under her cars before. So, you know, she's just a great person inside and outside the ring. There's something I've noticed about female bo- female boxing as well, is that you've either got two types of female boxers. They're either shocking or they're amazing. If there's no in-between, it's not like, well, she's all right. <laughs> it's either she's, look, 
you know that you see to like, God, this is going to be a fight tonight, or this girl's going to get knocked out. It's one or the other. There's no, there's no middle ground. I mean, and the fight you had with her was amazing. It was punch for punch, blow for blow, and it was just amazing. And of course, I know you lost that fight, but going into that fight, you were unbeaten, correct? Yeah. What does it, what does it feel like going to fight as an unbeaten fighter, taking on what looked like to me your biggest challenge? Uh. You know, I think throughout my whole career, I didn't care. All I wanted to do was fight. Um, you sound even like taking that fight, you know, the doctor told me not to fight, and I was like, you know what, I'm never going to get a chance to do this again, so I might as well just get into the ring. And I still, to this day, you know, I think that's what takes the pressure off what what uh, what I'm doing is because for me, it's since I'm not making thousands of, or, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm not making a lot of TV time. I'm not getting famous. So for me, the boxing is for me. And and that's all I care. You know, all I care about is fighting and making sure that I learn something from every every time I fight. Wow. Wow. It's, I said, uh, just what you said to me earlier about Leila Ali. And, and, and again, I I'm, I'm just still can't believe somebody who's been in the sport for as long as they were in the sport, Made so much money, made a lot of money from the sport, and you know, and was in, you know, apart from being Muhammad Ali's daughter, of course, after that, she made her own name through boxing. I'm still stunned by that statement. I, I, I'm listening to him talking, he's still not sinking in. I'm like, it's, it's disappointing, it's, it's very disappointing. You know, she got rich off the sport, um, yes, I'm saying, and, and she got and she got a lot of uh, publicity and everything just because of who her dad was. And the rest of us women don't have that. And and I think it's her responsibility to, to help the rest of us. But, you know, she she doesn't want anything to do with it. And, and since there's nothing we can do about it, you know, we can't, we can't make her if she doesn't want to do it. We, we just have to accept it and move on. And I think women like me, you know, there's lots of women in boxing who are very talented right now. And we just have to forget about her because she's she's not helping us. Wow, wow, wow! In terms, uh, I, while I'm talking to you, there are little thoughts that come through my mind. In terms of what about like, let's say for example, you've got Thomas Adamic, who's who, who's Polish, I believe. Um, have you ever tried talking to him to to maybe get on an undercard of one of his fights or talk to his promoter and try and get yourself some sort of deal like that, working that way around things? Because you've got a, you've got a Polish support there. I am signed uh, with the Mexican promoter, um, HG okay. Promotions. Right. So, you know, he says we get calls. He, we get calls for people who want to use me. Um, you know, of course, they want to bring me in as an opponent, and uh, but they just don't want to pay enough, you know. And, and it's really hard to go all the way to Europe for a couple thousand dollars, you know, to get used to the time difference, going to a hometown country. And, you know, going to Mexico is hard enough. You know, but going all the way to Europe for for the money they want to give us is is just hard, and it, it's hard to accept. Even you know, I'm not asking for, I'm not asking for a lot of money, but I I'm just asking for what I'm worth. And you know, for a woman, that's really not much compared to what do the men get paid. Well, maybe you need to maybe maybe you need to start asking for for more. Just start asking for more and, and ask for more instead of asking for enough. Ask for more. <laughs> Has... You know, but but that's the problem. The more you ask for, the less people will call you, and it's and that's sort of the situation with women. It's like we can't even ask for money. We can't even hire our standards because nobody will nobody will do it. Nobody will pay us. Well, how about would you be prepared to be the flag bearer now for boxing and for women's boxing and and set up an organization, you know, a cause because of this situation? Because it seems something very strong in your own heart. And obviously, you'd know firsthand of how women get treated in sport. Would you not start some sort of Ava Knight, First Lady of Boxing Union for other female boxers to to speak their mind and try look to a big promoter? I mean, Oscar De La Hoya, he's Mexican. What about him? You know, he he really he has no women, and he every once in a while he calls it throwing he throws a bone to women's boxing, and it's it's. When I look at that, I don't even really know what to say. I mean, you have to thank him for putting a women's fight on his card, but, you know, once a year or him doing it a favor for somebody isn't really 
his, you know, his heart isn't in there. He, he's not trying to help us. He's just doing someone a favor or trying to get rid of a voice of someone bothering him about a female that that's around. You know, I fought on a card of his two years ago, and, you know, he didn't really he didn't want to pay me much. Um, you know, they don't want to really treat you good or do anything. They just... They just want to get it over with, and they want to be able to say, hey, I put a woman on the card, so, you know, support us, support me, when really it's it's really they they just do us on the card and with, with the lowest that they could get, and, and they just want that support, extra support. Wow. My gosh. My, my gosh. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I, I was hoping to hear some more sort of positive news about you know, women's boxing on the rise and things are going to change, things are going to change, but it seems that there's more issues than, than I, I first thought. And Yeah, yeah and you know, the, the one big thing was everybody thought after the women hit the Olympics it would be great, it was yes. going to be better. But the only problem was is the girls that were in the Olympics are not turning professional. So that, yeah. that sort of, you know... It might get better for them, but it's not getting better for us. Did you get... You know, did and, you, and, sorry, guys. Oh, uh, I'm done. Okay. Nicola Adams. She, uh, I think, flyweight. I think maybe you, just your division from the UK. Mm -hmm. Did you get to see her all fight? I, I did. I, I looked her up, and I'm very impressed. And I think, um, you know, I tweeted her on Twitter, like, oh, you know, I think you're great. You're a great fighter. Oh, congratulations. Um, you know, do you have plans on turning pro? And her answer was that she, she didn't. You know, she had no – she never thought about it. She had no intentions on it right now. And that's what hurts us, you know. Um, that That's the first step. The first step to professional is amateur, and then from amateur it's professional. And if we don't have those amateurs turning pro, then it still leaves us out, you know. I She's very good, and I think a fight with her, her, you know, coming up to the pros, you know, I'm number one. She, she's number one in the amateurs, and it would be great to see a fight like that, you know, maybe in a year or two when she's ready. Even the girl from the United States, you know, um, Marlon Esparza, she gets wow. a lot of publicity in, in the United States. Um, she's probably the most paid female athlete, you know, boxing athlete right now. She gets paid more than the professionals do. You know, she gets paid paid way more than I do. What? But you know, they're not they're not they're not turning professional, so it, it's no good for us. So wait, wait. So you're saying to what you're basically saying to me, Ava, is that an amateur star could earn more than a professional star who is a a unified world champion. Unbelievable. And number one in the division. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. You know, she's got big sponsors, which is, you know, I, I don't I don't try and disrespect anyone. Um, she's she's great at what she does. Um, you know, we had our issues with her not supporting or, or respecting women boxing. But, you know, um, she's got the big sponsors behind her. She's a pretty girl, and she's good at what she does, and she makes good money off of it, you know. But on the other hand, I'm a world... I'm a world champion, um, three-time IBF, you know, WBC Diamond, number one in the world, and, and you know, I make the same as a low-income family, and it, it's it's really hard to, to 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 see reality, but you know, I've just pretty much taken it in and, and accepted it, and I'm working with it and hoping that it's just going to change for the women who are coming up because that's all I can do. Ava, all I can say is that you're being a champion not only out inside the ropes, but I'm sure outside the ropes you're just being just as great a champion because you're needing a lot of heart to get through the nonsense and, and the lack of support it sounds that you're getting um, where you're at at the moment. Mm -hmm. We yeah. just need we need the we need the television. That's we women need the television. We need the the publicity. We need people to put an eye on women. You know, and not just me. You know, I'm a great fighter, but there's a lot of women out there that are doing great in the United States. And, I, and you know, there's a lot of people in Europe who are doing good, too. But if it starts in the U.S., it'll branch out even more. You know, Showtime and HBO are the biggest networks. We need it. You know, us women need it. I think Brackus is a great fighter. If mm. she was on Showtime, people would love her even more. You mm. know, her and Hawk. The fight with her and Holly, and and we have a whole bunch of fighters from Argentina and South America, and 
everywhere, but we just we just don't get that support from the television. Mm. Mm. I, I I think there should be some sort of a campaign started, Ava. What do you think? Yeah, you know, we need to do it. Us women need to stand together, you know. I, I'm trying my best. I'm only one voice, you know. I bring it up every time I do an interview. But, um, you know, we just all need to stand together. I know uh, in the past, Kalisha West and I have tried tried our best to put out as much as we can, you know. And we fought before, but we're both on the same side. We we both want women's boxing to get better, and it, and it's hard for us, you know. We've We've been through the times where we both wanted to quit because it, we feel like it's not fair, but we keep fighting because we love it, and we just we just can't we can't let it go. But we need that respect. But it, it sounds by what you're saying to me, obviously by the whole amateur and the professional thing, that it, you earn more money being an amateur than you are becoming a pro star. I mean, if that's the case, what is the motivation apart from the fact that you really want to box and become a pro? Um, <laughs> What is the motivation to be a female a professional? Well, I think right now it's really not a whole lot. Um, you know, with with our US stars getting the sponsorships they do, you know, it's it's encouragement for them to t- stay amateur, but eventually there's going to be somebody younger and better and they're going once they get kicked out or get beaten, you know, they'll realize you know, what they should have done or what they should do. Um, you know, you you can't stay amateur forever. There's a, a age limit. So, you know, I don't, I really don't know what else to say, but, you know, it, it's just you, people think that when you're amateur, you're going to turn pro, and, and we just hope that the women, women do it because, like you said, there's no motivation for them to turn pro because they're doing fine in the amateurs. They're making some money. They're getting sponsorships. They're going through the Olympics. But we need that. We need them to turn pro. Is there a case, and this may sound real silly, but is there a case to make a, a, a legal case in terms of equal opportunities? Is is there a sexist thing there? Because what's happening with the men certainly is not happening with women. The, the equal pay and stuff like that is not happening. Could there be a, a, a legal case in this? Could it be taken Well, I, I, you know, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't really know what the what the legal grounds on it. But you know, definitely there's sexism going on here. You know, they don't want us women; they're not paying us women, and and it's hard. And they don't want us on TV. And I don't see how that's fair. You know, with MMA, the women are doing great on TV. What, what's the difference with boxing? You know, um, it's just as great as a sport. Everybody loves boxing, and, and I don't do. see why they wouldn't like the women in boxing. I don't know. I'm I'm, st- I'm I'm actually stunned. Like I said, I, I don't I don't even know what to say at the moment. I'm I'm really upset because, you know, people that you kind of look up to and you you, you, you 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 would look up to you think that they would say certain things. But did like what were was what were Layla's, Layla's reasons behind what she said? Why did she say I, it's not good for me? I, be- I believe that um. She said that boxing was a shady business, you know, and that's true. But I don't, I don't really think that's an excuse to uh, tell anybody not to do it. Um, I think at almost every business you get into is, is shady to a, to a point, you know. Um, she was never an amateur boxer. She doesn't really know how much politics goes on in amateur boxing, just like the professionals. So, you know, in, in one side, what she says is right, but the ethics behind it and the morals is wrong. Ava Knight, thank you so much for speaking to Bayloric TV. Before I finish the interview, I would like to have some details. Obviously, first of all, what's your Twitter page? Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter at, at Ava underscore Knight. Okay. And your um, Facebook page? Do you have a Facebook page? Yeah, the Facebook is facebook.com slash official Ava Knight, and my website is officialavanight.com. Ava. And I do everything myself. You know, I know, the bit, like I said, the men get the men get the chance to have everybody done for them, everything done for them, but um, everything is done myself. I, I'm the one that writes back. Nobody's doing it for me, and uh, the website's done all by me. So, you know, I, I do respond to everybody who – I try to respond to everybody who writes. I would like to say to anybody that is listening to this interview today with myself and Ava, the first lady of Boxing Night, um, 
that Ava, I contact Ava through Facebook, I believe, Ava? Yeah. So, and Ava responded to me. So, she does, well, Ava does respond to her um, messages. So, this is one fighter and one champion that will respond. Ava, thank you so much for the interview. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me and thanks for calling. And, uh, you know, as I said, uh, I will do what I can to talk to some promoters in the U in, in Europe and uh, see what they've got to say about the matter because I'd like to hear what they've got to say and see whether something can be done because, you know, this this certainly can't carry on. Like I said, champions like yourself deserve to be showcased and, um, yeah. you know, um, again, I'm just totally speechless. Thanks again, Ava. Yeah, thank you. Have a good day. Will do, you too. And cheer up. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. Um interview with Ava Knight. I'd like to once again thank Ava Knight for taking the time out of her very busy schedule to talk to Baylor Oak TV and thank her again for being so honest, so open and uh, being so passionate about the sport and obviously she clearly loves and is a part of and is very good at. Um, stunned. I just, uh, you know, even during the interview, if you notice, in, if you listen in the interview, I uh, few times I had to stop and go back because I just couldn't believe some of the, the statements that he's able to say and uh, you know um, obviously true what's been said and uh, hopefully at some point um, and it would only be fair to talk to Layla Ali to find out why it is Layla Ali said uh, that female boxers shouldn't become professional boxers and should take maybe stay amateurs. It'd be something to definitely. I'd be interested to find out why she said that. Um, uh, Layla Ali, is someone that I've always admired, always admired um, for her fight and heart, her skill, her ability. But um, you know, I sort of feel sorry for Ava Knight. You know, fighting hard, doing the best that she can, and can just about pulling an income from boxing and she's so talented uh, what can you say I hope that more people a lot of people get to see this video and he gets to show why women's boxing isn't is the state that it's in and we could probably encourage and help support Ava on his her journey um, to raise more awareness of what's going on um, yeah but anyway I hope you've enjoyed the interview and like I said um, we ask the questions you want the answers to and boy in this interview um, I've got some answers that to questions that I guess I wasn't ready for the harsh reality of women's boxing I hope you've enjoyed the interview and uh, look forward to uh, See you guys soon. Take care.